Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'll be reviewing my five-year-old Razor Blade Stealth that I purchased back in 2017, early 2017, and it is the called the late 2016 model. Anyways, the computer's right now sleeping, so let's turn it on, and this is going to be a real review. Not some uh, trying to make it look good, trying to do some things from scratch. It's going to be brutally honest, and especially that I just... Did I not turn it on? See, exactly. It turned on after about 10-15 seconds it took to do that. And I believe I can turn off the flash right now. And as you can see, here is the lock screen. This was the cheapest model back in the day. And as you can see, I was listening to some stuff and I was doing some things. I wrote a script for this, by the way. So the reason I'm making this video is because I purchased a Blade 14, and that's very expensive by the way. I'm not gonna, I'll review that when I get it. Anyways, let's talk about some of the good things before I get to the reasons why I'm upgrading and some issues with this laptop. It's lasted five years. That is the best part about this laptop. It wasn't just another cheap laptop that would last two years. It lasted five freaking years. And all that required was that I had to spend $100 on a battery replacement because the battery got bloated. I'll talk about that later. And that was actually two years ago. It was my fault, basically, for doing something. Like, if you overuse a CPU, that's kind of what's going to happen. And since this was the cheapest model, it was only 128 gigabytes, as you can see there. Only 118 now. And I was able to last with that storage compromise at one point this year, actually, I was even dual booting with Linux, 30 gigabytes for Linux. Anyways, moving onwards, the other point is that the CPU on this machine to make it last more than two years is i5 mobile rather than a Pentium. If you are used to cheap laptops or you're really young and your parents bought you laptops and they skimped out and they think cheap is good, cheap is not good, by the way, cheap is not good. That's, it's not value, it's not value at all. That is a lie. Biggest lie ever told. Cheap laptops. It's a lie. Anyways, Pentium sucks, okay? So this is another good reason. It wasn't a Pentium. I don't care if it was an iFi Mobile. iFi Mobile is not Pentium. Pentium is garbage. When you got the when I got this laptop in the box, it was such an amazing experience. You just feel great. Anyways, the next thing is it's not plastic. This is aluminum. When you buy this or when you got get this in your hands, you feel like you're using a premium product. You don't feel like you're embarrassed or anything for your laptop that you had to like compromise on a laptop. Even though I compromised in term because I only compromised because I couldn't afford the other the other levels, other tiers at that point, but I did get headsets for free. But uh yeah, you don't feel like you compromised on anything. Even the bezels here you, it doesn't feel like a compromise. It's very flush, and it didn't feel like a compromise even to this day five years later. A MacBook had those bezels too from five years ago, I'm pretty sure. It was only a couple months after I bought the machine that they up, they jacked up the prices and made a 13-inch model without bezels. But that was expensive, and it was out of my price range, so it didn't feel like I got scammed or anything. Anyways... The trackpad over here is very nice. It's not garbage either. If you've ever had one of those laptops, those cheap laptops, you'll know the, they have those buttons on here. No, you don't need that. You can tap to click as well. And what else? Those headsets I bought with this laptop, I still use to this day. Exactly. I only needed to purchase some the ear pads, but that's it. That was like $20. Also, this laptop and razor blades alike are an introduction to Quad HD, or I think that's what it's called, Quad HD, no, Quad HD, so QHD, and that's it. this is basically like something for the future, so if you've bought Quad HD, you're basically not going to be like, okay, let's, or at least from my perspective, I wasn't like, okay, let's downgrade to 1080p, so that was one of the considerations when I bought the Blade 14, as well as... Uh, at a higher resolution or at least a higher display size it'll matter more not really at this 12.5 inch display but it did it does give you an insight into how linux does not support quad hd properly 
especially on laptops of a smaller size, the DPI is a complete mess. The next thing I want to discuss is the speakers. I was looking at Blade 14 reviews and they said speakers were bad, even though the speakers are about double the size of this on both ends. And this is how it sounds like with and without Dolby enabled, okay? I'm pretty sure these reviewers had no proof of this Dolby Digital Plus. I just found out about it today. I, actually, I didn't find out about it today. I was tweet playing around with it today because I got home and I was listening to some Drake over there and I wanted to see if I could improve the quality and I could improve the quality still. So we'll play it. We'll play this Dave 2D video so I don't get copyright claimed from years ago. And I'll play it at max, okay? So it's gonna be really loud in my opinion. I don't even play stuff at max. I don't know why people think that's an argument that the speaker volume is like bad or something. Look at this. In terms of gaming, lightweight games like CSGO and Dota 2, those will play at around 55 frames per second at lowest graphics settings at 1080p. If you want better frame rates, you have to drop the resolution. A more demanding game like the new Rainbow Six is still- Do you notice the difference? Just by turning off Dolby, the volume basically went half. I think half is basically like a decibel or two. Like, I don't know, decibel is logarithmic. So I'm not sure, it went down a couple decimals right there. So you can really tell that when it comes to speakers, it's usually the reviewer's fault if they, have, if they don't own a razor blade and don't use it daily. They don't know about the Dolby thing and they might not tweak it properly. Like, there's a reason it's called, I have it set to music, and not movie, and not game, not voice, not anything, music. Plus, if you're really good at audio, you can use custom or whatever. But anyways, this is from 2016. It was built in 2016, basically, and those speaker quality was amazing there. I really doubt that the speaker quality, like the Razer downgraded after five years, like the speakers got worse. It has to be a comparative analysis there. They're probably comparing it to the Asus, and they'll be like, oh, it's not as good as the Asus, but good is good nonetheless. That's how you, that's how you decide on buying stuff. Okay, so moving onwards after the speakers, the keyboard. Oh yeah, after five years, no issues with the keyboard. Sometimes you do get stu stuff stuck on it and it's kind of hard to clean, but obviously I'm not here to clean a laptop and you shouldn't do anything after typing. You shouldn't really be touching your face while typing either, even if uh, the laptop's new. Keyboard types amazing, no issues ever. If something got stuck here, it's very easy to get it out without even removing the key. I don't even know how to remove the key. I've never done it before. Maybe I have once, but it's not an issue. Oh yeah, the next thing is that Razer supports the LGBTQ and has been supporting them since ever they added this. I got this in late 2016. I've been a proud supporter of the LGBT community. I put this on once a year and, uh, okay, maybe not in June, but you know, I put this on once a year and it looks amazing. It's always good to, if someone compliments your laptop, this is the first thing you show them because otherwise uh, they won't appreciate it even more. They don't know about this. This is the hidden feature of the Razer laptops. You don't see MacBooks able to do this, right? If Apple cared so much about the LGBT community, if they were pro pride, they would add <laughs> rainbow colored keyboards. You don't see that. I'll keep, uh, you know what, I don't want to keep it on. Anyways, there's profiles as well. So I'm using this function number to, for profiles. This is, this is my favorite, oh wait, oh yeah, here's a fire setting, but what's this? Okay, hold on, three. Oh yeah, this is uh, some favorite color setting, professional, <laughs> on a <laughs> battery life setting. There's also something called, uh, that I use for, is it four? Nighttime battery setting and what else? Oh, yeah moving onwards. This is battery intensive So I'll get to that issue later on and even though this is an i5 mobile chip It actually is not that big of a deal for Medium tasks so it could handle cuphead mm -hmm. back in the day as well as it can handle YouTube It can handle word and everything the only thing it can handle is IntelliJ so what I've done is set the CPU to 90% as a limit on battery. And it can't handle Twitch, but I'm not sure if that's a Firefox issue or Twitch's fault. I'm pretty sure it's Twitch's fault because YouTube plays fine. Twitch is the issue. I think that's chat, the live chat or something. 
really bad. Ridley makes performance hard. And some minor issues here is that the palm rest, so the obviously because it's a 13 or 12.5 inch laptop, so 13 inch total, and uh, if your hand is, I guess, even normal, if your hand's normal and you don't type like this, you type like this or something, and uh, you can see the edge here, this can hurt you. It's very, it's very sharp here, and these are the only nicks I've gotten in the last couple years. Even this year, I got nicks at the side, but that's ex as expected. There's no scratches anywhere else. That's, that's amazing, is it not? But anyways, yeah, these edges are very sharp and can hurt your... They don't hurt, but, you know, they're kind of annoying. So if you want to shave, you could probably shave if you put shaving cream on your face. Moving on, what made me upgrade? Well... One of them is this IntelliJ issue. I'm a developer, but when I bought this laptop, I wasn't as good at programming, I guess, and didn't have that much knowledge compared to what I do now. Now I use, I have Rust installed. I use VS Code. VS Code wasn't even a thing back then. It was like new. And as well, I'm getting a call. Hold on. Anyways, yeah. VS Code, IntelliJ, GitHub Desktop, all these apps came out and I started using them afterwards. And it basically, at one point this year, actually, I ran out of memory and it was very annoying to do multitasking because as a developer, it's multitasking. You're not doing single tasks. I remember six, five, like in 2016 when I was building my PC, people thought 8 gigabytes of RAM was enough for gaming. They were recommending that 8 gigabytes is a minimum. No, the minimum back then, even back then, was 16 gigabytes, okay? Because the what you got to realize is you got to think about the future. And the future should have been 10 years from back then. So that would have included that 2022 8 gigabytes would have been enough. Obviously not because people don't consider multitasking. Especially for gamers, the gaming knowledge, the gaming recommendations were not considering multitasking. When they were recommending 8 gigabytes, they were saying that you're only going to play a game. No, the real world does not work like that. The real world, you're doing multiple things. You have your browser open, you have a notepad open, and you're gaming at the same time. And as after you, when you're pausing the game or you know the game's in the background, you're working on stuff. That's how the real world works. Same with developing, except it's not a want, it's a need. You need stuff open all the time. Browser open, documentation open, IDE open terminal open like four at least four different things word open word files open like specifications you know everything next thing is the battery okay so let's talk about battery life battery life is garbage even though i replaced the battery two years ago and this could be due to this lighting stuff but or the quad hd display and uh, <laughs> the battery incident so the battery incident happened two years ago i was using the computer at full cpu usage on some website like to look at stocks and basically because of that the battery got bloated and uh, it was a good experience because I learned that you could limit the CPU so after that incident I limited the CPU to 90% I replaced the battery for $100 instead of buying a new one so that's why those laptop has lasted five years instead of three the battery cord is also kind of degrading over here we have this thing so like it might snap off and it's kind of hard to ensure that the laptop is charging, although this is a recent issue that has developed. It could just be due to me putting the cord in my backpack so often and then it getting damaged again. Second thing is the there's no GPU anymore. There's no GPU on this laptop. When I bought this laptop, I was operating under, under the assumption that I would do everything GPU heavy on a desktop and that a GPU only has one use, which is for gaming. That's completely false. A GPU is useful for editing videos and Premiere, like in Premiere Pro and Photoshop, also Photoshop. But when I built my PC, I didn't know Premiere Pro or Photoshop. I kind of learned that in barely grade nine, or actually, I learned. I don't even know how I learned to edit videos. I just did it one day. So exactly, you learn things as soon as you get a computer. You learn technical things and then you realize you might need some stuff. So this computer can't render or export stuff from Premiere Pro or After Effects, but you can edit stuff there, which I've actually done in the past, but I never rendered or exported something. That is just a bad idea. 
I thought I was okay, but obviously now my needs have changed. I want a laptop that can handle the same workload as my desktop. Actually, that's what I... I actually didn't even want that. I did, I just wanted something that could use that could have that has a GPU and could do similar stuff, not to the same extent. But the Blade 14 can surpass my desktop. So this is productivity related. Next, moving on, this is a mobile CPU. I wanted a, something that is more powerful. This is very slow at opening some apps, like even my music player. If it's running right now, but the first instance you run and it opens the window up, it's slow. And th that's kind of an issue that, you, that's when you know your laptop is not ideal, at running at the ideal speed. Then of course I set it again, I had to limit the CPU to 90% while on battery. And this is also to avoid those future battery bloating incidents, so that's actually a tip. If you have a, like a mobile CPU chip, make sure you limit the CPU usage to 90% to avoid the same issues I did. Even 95% in, yeah, 95%, because then thermal throttling or something like that, it just really, you gotta keep, make sure your temps are in a good level, and the best way to do that, limit your CPU to 90 to 95% while on battery. Obviously when you're on power, it's fine, or it should be fine, because no one's around for that fan to listen to. Some other issues for mobile CPU problems is that Software gets bloated over time. It's just, you can look at history, software gets worse over, not worse, but more bloated over time. There's more stuff in software, and this is all, I'm not going to explain it. And uh, yeah, you can't watch Twitch on this, by the way. That might be because of my ad blocker or because of Amazon, but who cares. Next is a webcam. For the Blade 14, I picked that over the Asus because the webcam is 1080p. I do not want to deal with 720p cameras anymore. I want a laptop where I won't be embarrassed at all in any regard. This one laptop, this laptop, the only embarrassing thing was that fan being really loud sometimes, and which is fixable through limiting, but a webcam of 720p, you're going to look ugly. There's no fix for that, and you really needed good lighting to look good. Uh, to look, you know, satisfactory, but uh, otherwise you're not going to look even satisfactory. I don't know why I said that, and it's definitely not for important videos. The last thing to talk about is storage. Like I said before, when I bought this laptop, I was, I would consider myself a developer at the time, like I just learned Python in six months of Python knowledge, okay, and nothing else, and I didn't know anything that would happen in the future. I didn't know anything that would happen that I'd learn. And the amount of software tools, like dev tools, dev projects, dev everything that I'd actually have to use. And also the Adobe products, you just don't know. So 128 gigabytes is enough for non-developers and non-creative like creative work. So if it, basically a new laptop, if you've never had a laptop before. But this is the future, so you don't have to make that compromise as me. So in the last five years, yeah, the storage did get filled by projects, tools, software, all developer related, by the way. And because of this, the SSD has slowed down. If I, I'll pull it up. So this is the specs right now. This is half of what Dave 2 ds review was when he, re, uh, when he did his review in 2016 of the Blade Stealth. But that might have been a better SSD, anyways. So we've come a long way. This is. 440, the new blade I'm getting is apparently 6,000. That's 10x, by the way. That's going to be insane. My plans for this laptop. Finally, to conclude, what are my plans to do with this laptop? This work laptop works perfectly fine, arguably. And uh, what I want to do with it is basically, instead of dual booting it with Linux, I will end up wiping Windows. I've never actually reinstalled Windows on this laptop, surprisingly. Maybe once, but it was like first year. And so, wipe off Windows, replace with Linux, actually Cutefish OS, make videos on Cutefish OS. And I want to develop a OneDrive client in two years so that you can use OneDrive on your Linux laptop or Linux device. I want to integrate, I want to make the Linux experience as good as possible because in the future, I want to become an I want to start an OEM business and sell Linux laptops or dual boot Linux and Windows laptops where people will get used to Linux in a good way.
Currently, there are some problems with Linux that I'm not going to discuss in this video, but that is my plan, to improve the Linux user experience and get to get normal users away from Chrome OS and to good Linux distros. Anyways, that's our, and also offer premium laptops. Anyways, that's it for this video. It's 20 minutes long, but for a reason, and I'll see you in my Blade 14 review.